Uh, thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Um, hey, uh, everybody. I just uh, this is Pastor Alex here. Um, so much privilege today to have a man of God, um, Kenny Russell. Uh, he's gonna introduce himself all the way from Israel, <laughs> a holy nation, a holy land. It's one of my bucket lists. Uh, this man of God has a powerful ministry. It's called uh, Bulldog Faith. So I'm going to have him introduce himself. And then um, I'm pretty much sure I, we today we are so much blessed. He's going to bring out the light. And the light is going to shine on us. The word of God is so sweet to hear the word of God. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah, Pastor Alec. Thanks for having me and uh, for having the opportunity to share. What a blessing it is to be here in uh, Tennessee and to meet you and all the other brothers and sisters that I've met over the last couple of days here in this town. It really has been amazing. And what some powerful services we had yesterday. The deliverance. Oh, man, that was oh, awesome. Oh, hallelujah. Man, I tell you what, I was on fire because, you know, <laughs> we're actively involved in, in outreach. And of course, deliverance is part of it. You know, it's not just about going and getting people to pray the prayer. We want to minister to the needs of the broken heart. And when you start dealing with the brokenhearted, you know, there is spiritual warfare that's going on. You know, we don't wage war against flesh and blood, but we deal with those principalities. And it's very good sharing the good news of the gospel with people. But, you know, we are called to set the captives free. We are called to bring deliverance uh, to those in need. So anyway, yeah, my name is Kenny Russell. I'm from Scotland. Uh, I'm, I'm Scottish, but I'm also Israeli. Uh, we made uh, Aliyah 11 years ago, 11 and a half years ago to Israel. And, uh, you know, what a blessing it is to be in the land. Everyone said that would never happen. You'll never get to Israel, you know, because of our profile and ministry and things like that. But the Father just opened the doors supernaturally. And through all those years ministering in Israel, I want to tell you a little story, if it's all right, yeah, sure. about, you know, you know I've, I've been walking in ministry for over 30 years. And everywhere the Father sends us in the world, I always pray when I go to an area that he has called me to go to. And I always say, God, what are you doing here? I don't want to come and do my thing. I don't want to come and, and, you know, just brand my ministry in an area. And when I got to Israel, I prayer walked the land for one and a half years. And I said, God, what are you doing here? Prayer walked. <laughs> prayer walked. For one and, one and a half, half years, eight. just off and on, getting out, you know, praying on the borders, from the southern borders, the northern borders, you know, from, uh, from Jordan, Syrian borders, Lebanese borders, Egyptian borders, and just, you know, saying, Father, reveal yourself to me. And he gave me this word that radically changed everything. Now, you have to understand, I have a doctor of theology. I've been teaching the Bible. I'm an ordained minister. You know, you'd think after like 20 odd years, you'd pretty much have your act together, you know? <laughs> so I'm walking the land and the word that changed my life, and this is what I want to share with you and with those uh, who are watching. The word that changed my life is this. The Holy Spirit said to me, the land deal, I'm trying to get the accent right so you can understand my Scottish here, the land deal concerning Abraham is for today and not for the millennial kingdom. You might be listening right now saying, you know, what does that matter? It doesn't really sound like much. And that's kind of how I was thinking when I'm hearing this word. I'm like, you know, what does that have to do with anything? You know, we're preaching the gospel. <laughs> so, God, you're talking about the land deal. The land deal. This is real estate. Right? Yeah, and we see, this in, uh, we see this in Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 15. We see the covenant of Abraham. And, you know, I've studied the scriptures from a Hebraic position most of my life. You know, there, there's been seasons within my life where God has brought change. You know, there was the seasons when we lived in America where the Father said to us back in 2007, he says, get all forms of paganism out of your Christian experience. Uh, these are an abomination before me. And, you know, I've always dealt with dealing with Catholicism. You know, I used to stand up when I was speaking and I, before I'd introduce myself, you know, here's this weird Scottish guy from wherever, you know, the Highlands of Scotland. And people, you know, who is this guy? And I said, before I speak, I need you to know two things. Number one, I am not a Catholic. 
<laughs> and I, and I, I like to hear that. I like to hear that because you, you mentioned something. I am not a pro protestant. Yeah. You cannot open my eyes. Yeah. And then the, the next thing I would say after they all laugh, and I'd say, secondly, I am not a Protestant because a Protestant is a Protestant Catholic. And I just told you I am no Catholic. Oh. <laughs> and, and of course, everyone's like shocked. Like, do I laugh? What do I do? Am I a Protestant? Who am I? Like, what, am I a Catholic? And, um, you know, I realized that the reason why the Holy Spirit was saying that is, you know, there, there was all the complaints that were nailed against the door by Martin Luther. Uh, he nailed them against the doors of the church. This is what I have against you. And what was it about? Concerning the word. You took the word away from the people. You brought in requirements that are not in the Bible. And this is what I have against you. This is what he was protesting against. Well, let me tell you something. We have not gone far enough. There's so many things that we have to deal with within our faith walk, uh, within our lives today. So back in 2007 in America, the Father was preparing me for Israel, and I didn't know it. You know, I moved in 2011 to Israel. 2012. So yeah. Like, uh, 10 years right now. Yeah. Praise so, God. yeah, 2011, I moved to Israel. But from 2007 to 11, the father started dealing with paganism. Get it out. Because when, you know, I know now as I look back, because when I got to the land, how will the Jewish people relate to me, relate to my ministry, relate to what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, and, you know, my wife is Jewish. And when she came to faith, man, she was so blessed. Man, she's brought up. She never had oh, Christmas. You have a Jew. <laughs> I have a Jewish wife, so yeah. A Gentile and a Jew. Yeah. A gent he has a Jew wife. A Gentile and a Jew, they got to marry. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And um, one of the things the Father said to us, you know, look, we didn't do Easter uh, for quite a number of years. We did um, Passover, Pesach. Um, you know, we wanted to reconnect. And, you know, Easter is a pagan festival. In fact, they didn't even change the name properly. Ishtar. Easter, you know, the, the whole uh, thing on Tammuz and all the rest, you can go and look it up online. Uh, but, you know, and then the father said to me, uh, I don't want you doing Christmas. And I'm like, what? Well, our organization, we've got one of the biggest Christmas and Easter production companies in Europe, you know, reaching about 30,000 schools. <laughs> and then the father's like, oh, you're, you're not allowed to do that anymore. These are pagan. Get them out of your life. You know, follow the biblical feast. So we started looking at Hanukkah. We started looking at the other feasts of the Lord. And when I got to Israel, I'm prayer walking one and a half years. The land deal is for today and not the millennial kingdom. Then I started going to the Bible and discovering all the areas. I studied years end time prophecy. I studied years the book of Revelation and opening up the scriptures to understand the time we're in. Because if we're going to live in today's world, you better know what time it is. If you know what time it is, you know how to live your life. Right. If you don't know what time it is and you're out of time, you're going to do things out of time, out of sync. And, you know, prophecy is about timing. When Yeshua came, he came on time. He was in place. He was on time. There was, uh, th there was a timetable that he was fulfilling. There's an order that needs to take place. And when we go back into the beginning of the book, into the Torah, we see there's an order that needs to be fulfilled. The feasts are not the feasts of the Jews. And I was brought up, you know, as a Gentile, I'm taking my wife and my family back to Israel, carrying them on my shoulders, bringing them back to the land. And this is what I'm thinking. And the Father started to reveal to me that these feasts, if you go back in the Torah and Leviticus, it doesn't say the feasts of the Jews. It says the feasts of the Lord. And of course, as we deal with Catholicism, what did Catholicism do to us? It said, OK, you can't follow the feasts. You can't follow the Sabbath. If you do these things, I'll kill you. You're going to follow Sun Worship Day, Sunday. And of course, we can worship any day. I understand that. But there... Oh, man of God. Okay. Sun Worship Day. Sun Day. You, you just cut those two words. You, you take S-U-N, space it out, and day. Yeah. Wow. And then you, then you have Saturday, Sat. <laughs> if you look at Shabbat, and we look at the words in Hebrew, to sit, it means Shev, to sit. So the seventh day means to sit, it means to rest. And this is an appointed day in the Scripture. So we talk about prophecy coming in line. 
God has days within the scripture where he says, set this time apart for me. Oh, but brother, Jesus came. Don't you know he proclaimed at the cross? It is finished. Hallelujah. We don't have to follow any of that. We're not under law. We're under grace. Well, let me tell you something. This is something that's very important. When Jesus, Yeshua, came, he came according to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Uh, Moses says, there's one coming like me. You must shamar. You must listen to him. And what, what are they waiting for the Messiah to come and do? Explain the Torah. Reveal the understanding of the Torah. So here comes Yeshua. What does he do? He explains the Torah. We have the letter of the law. And then what do we have? We have the spirit of the law. Oh, hallelujah. And what's easier? Is the letter of the law easier than the spirit of the law? Because I think in the Christian world today, we've kind of got things a bit messed up. Oh, brother, I'm so glad I'm not under the letter of the law. Oh, that's just impossible. You can't do it. The only reason the law was written is to identify that you can't do it. Interesting. So, um, uh, here's a man of God. You just say uh, the Lord came in a prophetic timeline. And I, re I remember listening to you. You were talking. You say right now uh, it's like 50 percent of biblical prophecy has been fulfilled. Yeah. We are in the last of the last days. But uh, prophetically. Uh, we just uh, we say we're in the fifty percent of the prophecy, and also you mentioned something about uh, uh, a prophet uh, like Jonathan Cohn. I actually had his book, a lady called Dale gave it to me. Uh, you mentioned about adopting prophecy of God and meddling to to be Americanized. Uh, that was it. That is the danger of it. So tell us us about it. Right, you can't take prophecies that are concerning Israel and just turn them into an American. You can't just go and look at ways and how you shape them. And when things like the humbinger that Jonathan Can wrote, mentioning that just briefly, uh, he was on the Jim Baker show, and Jim Baker said this to him. You can watch it on YouTube; uh, it's freely available. He said, "Jonathan," uh, he says to Jonathan, "Aren't you concerned that you have taken words out of the scriptures concerning Israel and you're applying them to America? Aren't you concerned?" And Jonathan Can responds. Responses. No, I'm not concerned because if we don't take the words concerning Israel and adapt them to Mer America, what would we preach on a Sunday? And I'm like, what on the front? Are we missing the word of God? You know, we're not called to change its context to apply it to ourselves. We are called to uh, identify what the word is talking about. And then the other key thing, I know time is short, you talked about where are we in the timetable of prophecy. Yeah. This is vitally important because according to Christianity, we're at 99.99999%. Jesus is coming back any moment. But here's the key. Everybody knows that Israel has to return to the land before the Messiah can come. And what they teach, you know, we just read this morning the book of Second Kings, you know, from chapter 11 through to chapter 18 in the Bible study this morning. And that portion of scripture, we see the northern kingdom was expelled from the land. And the northern kingdom was divorced. The gospel that Jesus preached was the gospel of the kingdom. It is not about the Jews coming back. It's about the whole house of Israel coming back. And you have reference after reference where it talks about the house of Judah, the house of Israel, the house of Judah. Even within the new covenant in Jeremiah chapter 31, 31, it says this new covenant is with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So there's an understanding that, uh, you know, Messianic Judaism says, well, if you see the word Israel in the Bible, it's about them. If you see the word Judah, it's about them. But, you know, that's just another form of replacement theology. Judah can't take hold of all of the promises concerning the whole house of Israel because biblically it doesn't weigh up. And even those dry bones in Ezekiel chapter 37, it says this is the whole house of Israel. And then we see the two sticks. And this is the true uh, revelation of one new man that we see in Ephesians chapter 2. It is not Israel and the church coming together as one. It's the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom coming together as one because the gospel is the gospel of the kingdom. Yeshua said, I've come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I am coming to restore my kingdom. And isn't it amazing in, in uh, the 
disciples' prayer, the, the formation of how to pray that we see in the book of Matthew, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Why does it say your kingdom come, your will be done on the earth? Why is he establishing his kingdom? This is the restoration of the fall of man from the garden. He's establishing his kingdom. He's calling all men unto himself. Man of God, you say something powerful. We say, Jesus died because there was a separation. It was a divorce of the kingdom. And also, you, you mentioned something. You say, uh, the Bible doesn't say Jesus uh, is, is coming. Uh, is, uh, say, it doesn't say Jews are coming home. It is Israel. Israel's coming. Yeah, tell us a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, you know, look, the bottom line is this, and you know, we've got, you know, I have teachings on this. You can go build those with faith.com and see these teachings, and I break these things down. But, you know, it's all about the marriage. And we know the bride of Christ, it's all about the marriage. But here's the deception. We're told that God married, the Father married Israel at Mount Sinai. Jesus married the church. So if the first believers are Jewish, what is the Father, what is the Son doing marrying the Father's bride? So obviously within the covenant, the covenant set up, there is a place of the cut off to Judah. And we see in Jeremiah chapter 3, the divorce of the northern kingdom because of their sin, because of their adultery. They were expelled. They were kicked out of the land from the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. That's why Jesus went to the Galilee. He went there because that's where the northern kingdom was expelled. And he said, I've come here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I've come to restore my kingdom. That is why I am here. So who married Israel at Mount Sinai? And here's some homework for you. Uh, I'm just going to tell you the answer, you know, and you can go back and research it and, uh, you know, discover this. It was Yeshua who married Israel at Mount Sinai, he was the one who divorced from the northern kingdom. When he died on the cross, the marriage covenant with Judah, uh, the southern kingdom, was broken. And that's why the new covenant could come in and it was for the house of Israel and the house of Judah because now the bride of Messiah is not the church because there's no word in the church in your Bible. Oh, brother, yeah. I've got the King James. I see the word church. Well, every theologian knows it's the word ecclesia. Ecclesia doesn't translate to the word church. This is the problem that gives us the disconnect of how the gospel flows from Genesis to Revelation. It's the word assembly. So when we go back to first mentions of the word assembly, it takes you right back to the foot of Mount Sinai. So Yeshua married Israel at Mount Sinai. Yeshua is betrothed to us. And if you are a, a Christian, a believer, born again, you are... You are adopted into the commonwealth of Israel. If your identity is not Israel, you have no covenant with God. So what is a Gentile? One of the nations without covenant. You cannot be a Gentile Christian. You have to identify as Israel. And what does that look like? And what change does that bring to your life? That's the big question. And that's what we need to be discovering and what we need to be talking about in today's world. And then we'll understand Bible prophecy. Because if all Israel has to return before Messiah can come, then we are not at the end of the end. The Christian churches get the Jews home, get the Jews home, and then Jesus can come. Well, here's the problem. It doesn't say get the Jews home in your Bible. Modern-day Zionism is the angel of light. It's the devil's system, which is anti-Christ, anti-Messiah. I know I live there. I, f I go through persecution in the land, the whole system in the land. You can be a, a homosexual, a Hindu, a Buddhist. You can be anything. You can be an atheist, and you're welcome to Israel. You say that you follow Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Huh? You're the only group that are not allowed here. Why? The system is anti-Christ. So we're on the verge of one of the most powerful revivals of all time will happen in the land of Israel. Is this a coincidence uh, with the building of a new, the third temple, that's a building? Um, I don't really care about the third temple because uh, Orthodox Judaism... It's not, you know, when, when we read in Revelation, you know, the false, the false messiahs coming to defile the temple of who? The Lord. Well, if the Orthodox build a temple, it's not the temple of the Lord. Because Judaism's a false religion. It was actually, it was recreated after the destruction of the temple, after AD 68, AD 70. They had to come up with a new religion because they had no sacrifices. So modern day Judaism is a manufactured religion 
after the destruction of the temple. And now it's not about by your sacrifices that you have forgiveness. It's about your works. It's a religion of works. So that's not the system that we are looking for. We are living stones. We are the temple of Yehovah. Let me tell you something. God is calling you back to the land. And we're going to see a mighty move of the Spirit in Israel that will create a revival that will bring transformation to the entire world. And everyone's thinking, who's going to press that nuclear button? Is Russia about to cause World War Free? It's the end of the world. Let me tell you something. It's not the end of the world. And I'm sorry to disappoint some of you that are on the pre-trib. Get me out of here. We need to get focused on what the Bible says and start following Bible prophecy and not listening to Greek Christianity's interpretation uh, of a false gospel. We need to get back to the true gospel of the kingdom. And Paul in Ephesians, he preaches the same gospel as Yeshua. So that one new man, that enmity between the two is between the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom and the, the, uh, the destruction or the, the cancellation of the commandments uh, that you see in Ephesians chapter 2. It doesn't mean that the Old Testament's done away with. It is the commandments and the ordinances concerning marriage. Because that marriage is over and now Yeshua is going to marry Israel again. Israel, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. And if you're a believer in Yeshua, you're called to be grafted in. Romans chapter 11. It says all Israel will be saved. But before it says all Israel will be saved, it says this. And this is very important. It says when the full number of the Gentiles come in. That is how all Israel will be saved. If the full number of the Gentiles aren't in, all Israel will not be saved. Oh, go back and read your Bible on that. I hope that's been a blessing. It's a powerful blessing. Man of God is just a, a, for closing as a time. I know we got to do this more. Definitely. Um, you say it's a powerful word. You, you are full of revelation. You say it started in the garden. It started as a marriage. Yeah. A marriage, Adam and Eve, everything started in the in Garden of Eden. And also you mentioned it's going to end up the same way it started in the Garden. Tell us a little bit about that and then this, you are closing. Okay, excellent. Well, we start in the Garden, we end in the Garden. So the beginning of the book, the end of the book, Revelation is in the Garden. We have the Tree of Life, obviously, which is Yeshua. Now we see, we see uh, you know, what, what takes place through Adam and Eve. There, that marriage covenant uh, demonstrates how we should operate within marriage, that, that a man will uh, leave uh, his father and mother and, and cleave to his wife. We see that system there. But the, the gospel or the restoration of fallen man from the Garden of Eden, we didn't have to wait until Jesus came or all the prophecies were outlaid about Yeshua and for him to come in the time that he manifested in the flesh. The answer to fallen man came in Genesis chapter 12, where he found Abram. And he says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you a land. I'm going to make you a blessing. All the nations of the earth will be blessed for you. How, why? What's so important about this covenant that is with Abraham? Father Abraham, how many sons? How many sons of Father Abraham? I'm one of them and so are you. That's what a song was being sung, sung the night I came to Yeshua. So the restoration, the gospel that was preached to Abraham is the same gospel that's preached to today. So we see such an important element there. And we have the Bride of Christ, uh, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. That's the wedding supper of the Lamb. We are betrothed to Yeshua at this stage. So we see at Mount Sinai the marriage that takes place where Yeshua marries Israel, the whole house of Israel. And we are coming to that place where Yeshua will marry the whole house of Israel. So your identity needs to be defined. So if it's defined, what are you going to do with the food laws? What are you going to do with the way that we walk? What do you do with the Sabbath? Just because the Catholic Church changed it, so now we don't honor the Sabbath when they were tested with the Sabbath in the wilderness. So, you know, there's some questions that need to be addressed. There's some things that we need to look at. And we're not preaching Judaism. We're not preaching religion. We're preaching relationship, but we have a holy God. God. He said, I'm a God of order. And we're called to walk in the ways. And when we get into the timetable of God, we experience the blessings of God. And these are the things he's going to restore in these days. Praise God, the God of order. Man of God, um, 
I just want you, uh, if you can give us information, people who are watching, where they can get in deep knowledge and information, and if you have any resources, you can uh, direct people yeah. as we close it. Hallelujah. Yeah, bulldozerfaith.com is the website you can go to. We have lots of resources on there, especially if you go under the newsletter tab. You will see under there all of our monthly magazines, and we do lots of teaching in those magazines with the scripture, and we help guide you in the truth there. You can also go and build those or faith on YouTube, and uh, we do broadcasts on an ongoing basis. You can look through our hundreds of uh, teachings on there and be blessed and encouraged. And, and look, if you are blessed and encouraged or you have questions, write to us. We are uh, ready, available to answer any questions and support people in in the journey of, uh, you know, working out our salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your humble servant and the new connection from Holy Land, Israel. Man of God, I'm humble to know you, and I believe we'll, we'll serve the Lord together. God bless you. Thank you for watching.